Well, as promised, put together just a, a short report on the trip that uh, I did over the past two weeks or so, and uh, hope that you will enjoy it. Uh, kind of give you, you an overview of what we, what I did while I was in New Zealand. Uh, it was, it's been, well, three years, a little over three years that we've been supporting James and Emily Kamek. And so uh, James has been asking me just about every year, hey, won't you come to New Zealand and preach? Won't you come to New Zealand and help us? Won't you come to New Zealand? And so finally uh, the schedule cleared out a little bit more and I uh, talked to the elders and it was decided that uh, I could go this past couple of weeks, obviously. And uh, the opportunity was for me to uh, help encourage the church in New Zealand, which I think was uh, a large part of what they wanted me to go over there for, or come over there for, and also to get an idea of uh, how James and Emily have been doing for three years and, and the work there in Hamilton, uh, which I think was the elders' uh, main reason for sending me over. And I think that was accomplished as well. And so we have this uh, uh, short little report of, of what happened while we were there. Uh, the, the short synopsis is uh, I was in country for 15 days, and I preached 14 lessons in those 15 days. And so uh, uh, my voice was a little tired, my body was a little tired, and uh, those uh, airplane seats get harder after every hour. And uh, when you spend a lot of time on them, it takes a while. Trip started on a Tuesday. Uh, we left, or I left on, on Tuesday afternoon and uh, went from Dallas to Los Angeles, uh, from Los Angeles to Tahiti. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's nice being in Tahiti, just not in the terminal in Tahiti. It's hot and there's no air conditioning, and the smoking section was right there outside. Uh, another uh, eight-hour flight, and, and uh, we went to uh, Auckland, New Zealand, uh, which was the, one of the principal cities, or the principal city in New Zealand, not the capital, but one of the main cities. And from there, went to uh, the town of Palmerston North, where we began, crossing uh, uh, 19 time zones and uh, lasting around 24 hours, 28 hours with uh, layovers and everything and uh, uh, got landed around uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Thursday and I was tired already. You know how jet lag kind of hit you and the, the family I was staying with, it was a, a family by uh, Kent and Rachel O'Donnell. Uh, I met Kent for the first time in 2000 when I first went to New Zealand. Kent uh, is a graduate of the East Tennessee School of Preaching and Missions, which is now the Southeast Institute of Bible Studies in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, he is uh, married to Rachel. They have four children. Uh, they had four guest children staying in their house, and not one of those was me. No comments on that. Uh, I was in addition to the four additional children, <laughs> and so uh, uh, we, were, we were there for the, the first night, and uh, uh, we were, I was preparing for the first family encampment in which the families from all over New Zealand would come together for a camp and I was preaching the lessons there. New Zealand is a small country just off the coast of uh, uh, Australia. It is made up of two principal islands and many small islands around it. Uh, my travels took me mostly to the North Island and the Palmerston North you can see here is kind of in the southern part of the North Island not too far off the coast although in this particular trip uh, I didn't actually get to go to the coast at any time, so I kind of missed that, but uh, uh, New Zealand is beautiful from top to bottom and left to right, so uh, I wasn't hurting for uh, opportunity to see the beauty of the country itself. Uh, we left Friday, the day after I got there, to go to Camp Killsby. Uh, this was on the way out to Camp Killsby. You can see kind of the, the ideas, I don't know. Yeah, I know, it's not really doing a lot of justice, but it's beautiful. The greens were so lush and beautiful at the time. It's the summertime of the year. Uh, we got off a main road onto a, a gravel road. We went in through a, a farmer's gate. We went further and deeper into the farmer's field uh, until we got out to just a, a clearing, and there was a building there, and this is Camp Killsby. It's called a scout camp, much like we would think of a Boy Scout camp uh, today. They rent the facilities. Uh, which includes a kitchen and a mess hall and a couple of bathrooms. There is a bathhouse off in the way, and then we had our luxurious accommodations. That was my tent, the one on the far right over there. Uh, I asked because I'd been to camps in New, in New Zealand before, the, the two times I'd been previously, and uh, uh, one of them had nice cabins that we stayed in, and another one kind of had a barracks style, and I said, so Kent, uh, are we staying in cabins, or is it a barracks, or what? And he said, well, you're staying in a tent. 
Good on you. All right. Uh, don't worry, we've got a big air up mattress for you. When I went to my tent later that afternoon, it was already starting to deflate. About an hour after I laid down to go to bed that night, I was laying on the ground. That's okay, because they had a good shower, and a good shower can erase a bad night's sleep. The next morning I got up and had the shampoo on my hair and everything was good and the water went off. Not the hot water went off, I mean the water went off. And so I just had to use a, a dirty t-shirt and wipe the shampoo out of my hair and get dressed and, and go on that day's shower. It didn't erase a bad night's sleep that time. But uh, I had the opportunity to preach the, uh, to a, a small group of Christians. The largest group we had out there was just uh, right at 100. Uh, we, we had several different congregations involved. Uh, there were, uh, in, in this group, most everyone in here are, are, are Christians. There's a few non-Christians. A couple of the guys here are preachers, but by no means the majority of them. Uh, and uh, this was just one of the, I, I just took an opportunity to take a shot. Uh, these pictures are all done with my camera. I know they're not great, but uh, hopefully they'll do. Uh, and the, the series that I did was the, the World's Colliding Series, the contrast between the supernatural and the natural, between atheism and theism. And so uh, they were well received by the brethren there. That, that made up a, the first six lessons that I did uh, were on the World's Colliding. And that, that camp lasted from Friday all the way through Monday. Uh, Monday afternoon, we went, to, we went back into uh, Kent and Rachel's house, or I'm sorry, went to uh, Kent's brother's house, uh, Todd O'Donnell. Met Todd also the first time that I was there in New Zealand in 2000 and 2004. Uh, Todd and Gina have, have uh, uh, been in our house, in Julia Mine's house, Mine's house when we were in, in Leonard. Uh, hadn't seen them in several years other than at Polishing the Pulpit where they, I saw them a couple times in the last four or five years. Uh, Todd is also from New Zealand, native like his brother, but his wife is from Tennessee. He met her while he was going to the East Tennessee School of Preaching as well and married her and took her back to New Zealand, and her mother loves him for that. And uh, so I uh, stayed with him and then uh, got up Tuesday morning, and uh, I knew that I would be preaching at the church on Tuesday evening, so we kind of had Tuesday during the afternoon to do whatever we wanted to do. And, and Todd said, well, come with me. And so he took me out into the, the bushes of, uh, of New Zealand, uh, out into the mountains and the, the valleys. Uh, there's a name for this valley. I can't for the life of me know, uh, remember what it is, but you can kind of get the idea of, of how beautiful it was, just thick and lush. And, and uh, this down here in the lower corner is, is the road that we were on. It was very grown over. And uh, the valleys, you can see... Uh, as we went through there, there we go, and he took me beekeeping, and uh, he said, uh, he said, it's all right, I've got a suit for you, and I said, wonderful, and it was his suit, now, Todd looks more like Scott Barham than me, and so I got the suit, and I'm squeezing it together, he said, you know, it's like when you have a tent, and you're putting it back in the bag, and you're trying to zip up the bag, and it's too big, you know, and Paul, Todd was pulling on one side, and other guy's pulling on another side, and I'm, I'm sucking it as much as I can, and we finally get the zipper up, because if I can't get this zipper up, I'm not going beekeeping, you understand, right, so uh, it, it worked out well, there was, uh, you know, I guess just a couple of mishaps while we were beekeeping that day, and um, Believe me, that shot was hard to do because I could barely move my arms and legs. That suit was so tight. We had a good time. Went into the, uh, the church at Palmerston North. This was the church building that, the, that has been there at Palmerston North. Uh, I had preached there once before in 2004. Knew several of the brethren there. Had an opportunity to preach uh, uh, a lesson. Did the one on Mark chapter 1, verse 41, uh, about the touch of a Savior and the compassion of Jesus upon the leper when he healed him of his leprosy. The brethren seemed very enthusiastic about that. Wednesday morning then we left and uh, flew from Palmerston to Hamilton. Hamilton is where James and Emily Kamek are and I spent the rest of my time in, in Hamilton with the Kameks. Uh, Hamilton is located uh, in the uh, far north of the North Island. It's one of the principal cities. It has one of the largest universities in uh, the nation of New Zealand. It is also home to the International Mormon Temple of the nation of New Zealand. So there's a lot of Mormons in the city of Hamilton as well. 
uh, stayed with the Kamiks that, uh, that when, got there Wednesday afternoon and, and uh, preached for the church in, in Hamilton that night, uh, doubled up and cheated a little bit, preached the same lesson on uh, Mark chapter 1 and the touch of the Savior uh, because it had a lot, of, a lot of things bouncing around in my head. Uh, Thursday, I spent most of the time getting ready for camp, polishing off uh, uh, whatever I didn't have ready of my PowerPoint le- uh, for the lessons. And then Friday, uh, drove up uh, just outside of the city of Hamilton to Mount Parangia, uh, where there is a camp uh, with cabins, mind you. And they had a semi-private room for me. It was wonderful. I had a kitchenette and a, and a, a full-size bed. And, and uh, uh, they brought linens for me because I didn't bring my own sheets. And, and they... The, the sister that brought the linens brought uh, twin size sheets for a full size bed and it was still better than anything I had done and she felt bad about it when she found out she said I realized that you had a full size bed and I gave you twin sheets I said hey it didn't bother me a bit it still slept and so uh, we went to uh, Camp Parangia uh, this was uh, they had a mess hall kitchen uh, worship area set up much like the other one you can look just out one direction off the mountainside you could see the fields and the farmlands out that way off the other side you can see kind of the, the jungle part of uh, Uh, Mount Parangia and uh, uh, there while I was there I did the organic outreach uh, 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 lesson series that uh, I did I think in 2013 here and uh, you know when they asked me for topics or ideas I sent them several and uh, uh, knowing that they were going to be series, I was looking for a series that I'd done that had six at least six lessons because I knew that each lesson each camp would, uh, would require six lessons and uh, I, I threw this one kind of as a throwaway, hoping they wouldn't pick this particular lesson because in New Zealand they're very evangelistic. Uh, the brethren are very evangelistic. The, the preachers are evangelistic. They work hard on, on personal evangelism. And uh, to be fair, I felt inadequate in, in teaching anything about evangelism to the Kiwi brethren. But uh, they enjoyed the lessons. There are lessons they were very appreciative of, of uh, uh, the ideas that, that are brought to them and... Uh, um, Certainly nothing that they hadn't heard before, but maybe just reminding them of some of the responsibilities and the things that uh, we do. Uh, those those uh, lessons, there were six of them during the, the Monday or Friday through Monday again. Uh, it was, uh, you know, in New Zealand, one thing you learn here, I'm in the, the heat of their summer, it's 85 to 90 degrees, and there's not a building in New Zealand with air conditioning. Uh, and that was a little difficult, but uh, we made it through. Tuesday, we went back to... Uh, James and Emily Kamek's home, actually Wednesday or Monday we went back to their home, stayed the night there. <clears throat> Tuesday James and I had the opportunity to go to a uh, aviary, we saw a kiwi bird. Uh, you think uh, New Zealand is the land of the kiwi, but uh, that's not a kiwi by the way. <laughs> uh, that's basically a parakeet. But uh, the uh, kiwi is a nocturnal bird, it is an endangered species, and even though it is the mascot of the nation itself, uh, you don't see very many, and James has.